everybody. It's been a while since I've done a story time video. I think I've only ever done one, or maybe two. But I like watching other people's story time videos when they're interesting, and hopefully this is kind of an interesting topic. I don't really know. I've kind of wanted to talk about it in a video for a while, but I wasn't sure how like into it people would be. I'm going to talk about the time that I lived in a haunted house? Question mark. I do not personally believe in ghosts or anything like that, so if I talking in a very like joking kind of way or like, I'm not taking it seriously, it's just because I don't really believe in all this stuff. The only reason I'm actually making this video and talking about this is because there were other people involved who also thought it was very strange that things were happening that couldn't really be explained. Putting it out there, I'm not trying to offend anybody, this is something that happened to me personally, and I find it very weird, but I just don't believe in ghosts or paranormal stuff all that much. Sorry if I say something that is insensitive, basically, is what I'm trying to get out of my mouth <laughs> in a very long-winded way. So I have a hard time keeping track of, like, timeline, the timeline of when things happen, because the house that I'm talking about, we actually lived in twice within, like, a 10-year period or something. So we first moved into the house when I was, I want to say 15, but I'm not 100% sure, and it was quite a strange house. It wasn't like old, but it wasn't new, if that makes sense. Like it, it was built in the 1900s. I think it was built in the 50s. It wasn't like a super historic kind of house, but it wasn't like a modern house either. And before we moved in, there was actually a woman that was a hoarder living in it. And whenever we would talk to like cable guys or you know, maintenance people that had been in the house before we lived there, they would say, like, you could only walk through these tiny little paths that she made in between, like, boxes and stuff. Like, the house had a little bit of a quirky history, I guess, and it was originally owned by a couple, I believe they had it built, if I'm not mistaken, and nobody had ever died in the house or anything like that. Like, we knew the history because we were only, like, the third family to ever live there, and it wasn't that old. It was never like a, you're moving into this house just so you know, this shit happened here. The woman who lived there before us, the hoarder, kept dogs locked up in what would be my parents' bedroom. So the walls had many layers of paint, the carpet wasn't in the greatest condition, and the doors had scratches on them. So when we moved in, we kind of had some restrictions as far as what we could do like totally understandably. The owners didn't want us doing a whole lot to the house unless it was going to improve the condition of whatever the lady before us did. We were able to paint and things like that, but we didn't ever really do anything super drastic to the house because we ourselves didn't have a lot of money to do anything. But there was one specific project that we did in the house while we were there, and that was to renovate, and when I say renovate, I mean just like a very loosely loosely using that term, um, one of the bathrooms. There were two bathrooms. There was a main bathroom and there was a smaller bathroom that looked like it was added as like an afterthought. I don't know why I'm wagging my fingers. <laughs> the layout of the house is weird, so while I'm trying to describe things, I'm going to do my best to find pictures if I can so that you can see what I'm talking about, but the house was weird and it might be a little confusing but the layout is a little bit important. So when you walk in the front door, in front of you there's a pantry for food. On the right side is like two steps into, and you're in the kitchen, like you're there, the kitchen's right there. To the left, you would walk down this really tiny hallway that had the washer and dryer and like a water heater or something. And then there's a door. And on the other side of that door was a really big room that was just kind of like a bonus room and my brother would go in between that and this like screened in porch room as his bedroom he would like switch back and forth and in that bonus room was the little bathroom that my dad was redoing so one day i was in the kitchen i was in the fridge doing something probably trying to stuff my face because i was bored and i for some reason just decided to look up and i looked down the little hallway with the washer and dryer and the door to the bonus room was pretty much stayed open if my brother wasn't sleeping in that room. And 
for some reason got the feeling to look down the hallway just to look and i see the shadow of a person peek their head out of the bathroom and then pop back in the way it happened was really weird because i saw just as i was looking they they popped out and then as i was looking for like a split second they went back in like it was the fastest thing ever that i almost thought i didn't even see it and it wouldn't have creeped me out so much if i hadn't have been home by myself <laughs> in the middle of the day like i said i don't believe in ghosts but that really freaked me out because i was by myself and i was like i want to say maybe like 16 at this time i <laughs> i don't know i just i didn't feel right about it and i went into my room and i closed the door and i locked it and waited for people to come home because i was just like holy shit it is not lost on me that whenever people do renovations of houses and stuff like that that's when you know they say that spirits will come out and be more active and stuff like that but nobody had ever died in this house <laughs> so that's why i was like what the fuck is happening i was bef even before that happened i was always kind of spooked to leave my room at night in that house my room was right across from the bathroom and to go to the bathroom i had to walk by the entrance basically to the living room and for some reason i hated walking around that house at night and it was just i'm not afraid of the dark i'm not really afraid of any logical things <laughs> there are some illogical things but i never like I never believed in ghosts and I was never afraid of the dark, so that never really made sense to me. The house itself just gave me an odd feeling and I can't explain it. Another time I was not by myself this time, but I was in the same position. I was in the kitchen looking down the hallway and I just glanced up for a second and I saw a man standing by the garage door, which was how you, you know, you got into the house through the bonus room from the garage so there was a door to the garage there and it was just like a tall man wearing a top hat and what's weird to me is like in my head i was like he looks like abraham lincoln like that's really weird and it didn't freak me out so much because i wasn't by myself this time so i was like oh what, whatever like it could have just been somebody and i just didn't you know pay attention enough or something I just kind of wrote it off and forgot about it for a while. <laughs> so over time, little little weird things would happen, but I wouldn't say they were significant because I kinda can't think of any of them off the top of my head other than those two. Um, but little weird things would happen in the house. And my family kind of would just joke around that the house was haunted. Like we would be like, ah, well, that's the ghost or whatever. And so I just kind of randomly one day gave him a name <laughs> because I was like, he's creepy, he's a creepy old man. I'm just gonna call him Herbert because of Herbert the pervert from Family Guy. So I was like, I'm gonna call him Herb. That's his name. You know, whenever something weird happens, it's, we're, gonna, we're just we just would say it was Herb. And I was sitting in the living room with my parents one night, and we were watching TV. We were all kind of spread out, and the fireplace to this house was the most stubborn thing in the world. If you wanted to light a fire, you had to fight with the glass shield, I can't remember what it's called right now, the little doors that close so that like you can keep the cold from getting in your house when you're not using the fireplace. You would have to fight with those to open them. And my dad had them open, and when they were open they were just as stubborn to close as they were to open. And my dad had the fire going, we're all just sitting watching a movie, and we randomly hear a creaking noise and we look all at the same time and the glass door one side just kind of slides shut all like very slowly on its own and we're just like excuse me <laughs> and it was just it was weird because it wasn't just like i just heard it or i saw it out of the corner of my eye this time we heard something looked over and saw it happen i could see any skeptic saying like maybe the the metal got warmed up and that made the door close easier we lived in this house for like 10 years in total and not ever once did those doors close on their own before or after that like never again after that and never before that so it was a weird just 
isolated incident and none of us could explain it. So fast forward a little while, um, some of these events might be out of order, I don't totally remember, but I don't think it matters all that much what order they were in, it was just, the whole experience was just weird. But my mom was talking to the neighbor, and we knew him pretty well at this point because of all the time we'd lived in that house, my dad would do little jobs for him, I fed those dogs for him once, uh, and my mom was talking to him about the house, and the topic of the couple that originally lived in the house came up, and he... My mom asked what the man looked like, and he said he was a tall, skinny man with a beard. My mom found that so weird, <laughs> because, like, that's kind of what I saw, but I, I never took it, like, to be that serious. It was just like, a, oh, huh, what a coincidence that I, I kind of saw that, and that's what he looked like. I never was like, oh my god, I saw him. That's the ghost. You know, like, it wasn't... I didn't take it that seriously, I was just like, oh, that's cool. The weird thing is how disturbed my mom looked when she was telling me things uh, that the neighbor had said, because I was just like, oh, ha, that's weird, you know? And she was more like, there's more, you know? Like, she, she was like seriously disturbed by something, I could tell. And I'm like, oh, all right, so tell me what else he said, like, I'm interested. She goes what do you call the ghost? And I said, Herb. I call him Herbert. <laughs> you know, because he's Herbert. And I'm like, why? And she goes, the original owner's name was Herbert. Blah, blah, blah. I won't say his full name. Just for privacy reasons, you know. His family's still alive. <laughs> and I'm like, no. You know, I thought maybe our neighbor was messing with her. We had never actually told the neighbor that anything was going on in the house, and we definitely never told him that I named this so-called ghost that was in our house. So the fact that he just willingly gave my mom that information was kind of weird. And so I was kind of shocked by that. And my mom told literally everybody else that lived in the house, my brothers, my dad, my sister, and Everybody was kind of freaked out by it. Like, none of us believe in ghosts. As far as I know, I think nobody in my family believes in ghosts. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure none of us do. But it got me really curious, and I got my mom even more curious. So we did some digging, and sure enough, <laughs> my mom found records for the house, and the owner's name was Herbert. And he looked like the person that I saw standing in the bonus room that one time by the garage door. And it was just like a whole weird kind of string of events that I, I kind of always chalked up to being coincidence because I've never had any other ghostly experiences or anything like that or like paranormal experiences. I've never seen anything out of the ordinary except for those like three times that that happened in that house. And the one time I heard a voice but now I don't remember what the voice said, and it sounded female, so like that doesn't explain anything. But yeah, it was it was just very weird. It turned out that the the owner Herb was very attached to the house. He loved the house, and his wife lived in the house after he died. Like he didn't die there, but his wife lived there until like after he died. Out of morbid curiosity, I decided to go and find a grave, and I looked him up, and me and my mom found the graveyard. We actually lived really close to the graveyard that he was buried in, and I found his gravestone, and his wife was buried right next to him, and I was just kind of overwhelmed at the whole situation. I was standing there thinking like, God, this is just... What? It's such a weird coincidence that all this happened and like I found this guy who I don't even know. Like I don't think I was alive while he was alive, you know? And it was just, it was an interesting just story now that I have to tell, I guess. The house has been demolished since we moved out several years ago and it doesn't even look like there was ever anything there. 
which is kind of upsetting. Because <laughs> when you have memories that are like, especially memories like this, that are not just like normal memories, it's kind of sad. I had heard that they were supposed to turn it into a business at one point, and my plan was always to go visit the business just to go back inside the house one day, and that never ended up happening. Whenever we drive by the lot that it used to be on, all I can think about is if Herb was actually there, <laughs> what happened to him? I haven't had anything weird happen since then. I didn't have anything happen before then. <laughs> I don't think I'm like a magnet for paranormal stuff or anything like that. It was just some, some weird shit that went down that just happened to all lead somewhere really specific. But yeah, that was my experience living in a haunted house. <laughs> and I have to keep saying haunted house because it was never actually officially deemed to be haunted. It was just a house that had some weird shit happening to a family that didn't believe in ghosts. <laughs> but that's it for this story time video. If you would like to hear more story times from me, then let me know because I have a couple more. But if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I hate asking, but like 92% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. And I find that kind of weird, even though I watch channels that I'm not subscribed to all the time. But, but it would be nice to have a few if you do decide to stick around and leave me a comment to let me know how you found my video, maybe. That would be kind of interesting to find. But I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.